Do we know what this sounds like? It sounds like. Okay, we are live. Good afternoon and welcome to the Spark Fund session on Microbit for Teachers. I'm Jeff Branson. I'm the Community Development Coordinator here at Spark Fund as well as a field engineer. I'm here with Brian Wong. Well. Jeff, how are you? Oh, oh, good. Jeff, how, how are you doing this good. afternoon? So uh, yeah. We're going to work this afternoon, this afternoon with the microbit, the microbit, which is, which uh, is a small microcontroller, small comes with micro an online, online programming, programming environment. environment. Um, we're going to hope to get everybody plugged in this afternoon. Joining us remotely is Derek Runberg. Derek, can you hear us? Great. Thanks Great. for joining us, Derek. Oh, no, he's not on there. So we we're should get Derek up, up there. Yeah, we should get Derek up on the screen behind us here in a minute. Um, so as we move into this, you can join us as we program. We'll uh, be accepting comments at the bottom of the screen on the YouTube feed. So if you have problems or questions, you can post those in the comments and we'll get right back to you. Our faithful audio engineer, Mike Grusin, is here with us and uh, helping us get things. Thanks a lot. Uh, sorry for starting a few minutes late. We had some for, uh, technical uh, ironing to do. Few, um, yeah. Brian, where should we go with this? So real quick, just want to quickly introduce yourself and talk about your background with Spark Fun. Sure. So um, I joined the Spark Fun education team in 2011. I'm a former industrial fabricator. I uh, have a background in mathematics and a little bit of computer programming, but uh, came here to uh, help kind of get things off the ground with microcontrollers and education. I travel a lot, do uh, partnerships, development, training across the country. Uh, and echo is killing me. Echo is killing me. I just took I, Derek's feed sorry. out of my yeah, ear because I couldn't do it. So. Why don't we have Derek on there? Um, so, Brian, can you talk a little bit about yeah, what you do? Yeah, of course. So, I was a former engineer. I started out doing antenna design and uh, uh, as an electrical engineer and uh, left engineering to become a high school teacher. I taught high school physics and math for about five years. Um, around the time, I started using electronics and engineering. And so, we're going to talk about some of these cool things here today. And uh, this is we're kind of nearing the end of the teacher appreciation week, but uh, hopefully teachers out there have gotten a chance to get uh, some goodies from Starbucks or whatever coffee shop uh, freebies that are going on this week. So uh, I was talking but, to somebody who said they were getting flowers all week. And yeah, I thought right. That was excellent. So, yeah, I remember flowers when I was in the classroom. There were books. There were deals for coffee. There was good, uh, great things for bagels and and donuts and great things like that. So. Awesome. All right, let's jump in. So, you if you your cameras on the laptops? Yep, the cameras are, are muted. Uh, we just can't hear Derek. I don't think they're muted, though. Oh, muted. Uh, I'm muted. Yeah. Just muted. Um, Brian, can you turn off the camera? Sure. Better? Camera's on. Okay. So I'm going to go from the slides for just a little bit here. So yep. just keep things going. Are we good? So SparkFun is an open source electronics company here in Boulder, Colorado. We employ about 140 people. Uh, our company call to action is to start something and that's kind of why we're doing this live coding session this afternoon. Uh, our CEO brought to us the idea that we support the life cycle of invention and innovation in people from 8 to 80 and I always say we work with blinking lights to satellites meaning we'll teach you how to blink a single LED or work with a guidance system that may go into something like a small sat. Um, and at the heart of our empowerment um, are tinkerers and building stuff. So we want to get people actually doing hands-on work. Do you want to take the next slide? Yeah, go ahead. So real quick, Sparkman is an electronics company. And what we do is we enable makers and hobbyists to build cool stuff. And what we're going to talk about today, let's go on to the next slide, is really what we do for education. Um, and we're going to talk about this thing called the micro bit. And it's got a unique history. It actually dates back to the early 1980s. And uh, Jeff, do you want to talk a little bit about, about what we're looking at here on the slide? So in the early 1970s, the BBC launched a show called The Mighty Micro. And they started looking at the possibilities of computers computing and how they would change society. And it was a very speculative show. But around 1982, they launched a second kind of show 
based on this um, called the computer program. And accompanying that show was an actual physical computer from the Acorn Computer Company called the BBC Micro. And as it turns out, this computer and this show, this public television show basically on BBC, uh, became instrumental in teaching citizens about computing and computers and how to write code. And about three years ago, the BBC relaunched this uh, program, right? Yeah, this program, and updated it with the micro bit. And what's interesting, actually, about, about the BBC, back in the 1980s, I think around 1984, about 80% of, of schools all had one of those computers in their school. This is actually pretty crazy to think about, that back in the early 80s, that every school had one of these computers, and they were really pushing the limits of what you could do with computing back then. Um, and with the advent of technology and Moore's Law and all those great things, you know, things are getting smaller, cheaper, faster. Uh, we're now able to use um, a device that's about this size. It's smaller than a credit card. I don't know if you guys can see that there. Um, we keep looking back so we can <laughs> see what we're doing. Yeah, so, uh, but, but this has now been launched in, uh, in the UK. Uh, let's go to the next, let's go to the next slide there. You're looking at here, right. So that's the micro bit there. And so what this device is, it's a small programmable chip. On the back of it, there's a microcontroller, and uh, uh, it's, there's a couple buttons and 25 LEDs that are programmable. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead, see, where are we? We're on the SparkFun page. So sparkfun.com slash microbit. Uh, it's, order, it's available for pre-order. SparkFun is one of the first distributors here in the United States. It was first launched to all grade six uh, or sixth grade students in the UK. So this is part of their new initiative, trying to recreate what they did back in the 80s, now uh, for the 21st century uh, students. So, so, and again, this is a partnership between the BBC, the Microbit Foundation, Microsoft, who provided uh, kind of the main programming software for this, and Farnell, which does the manufacturing. So do you want to talk a little bit about the board, Brian? I'll hold yeah, the board up. Of course. We'll start on the LED side. <laughs> hold it right side up. It, yep. Right in the center, there's 25 LEDs. There's five, it's a five by five matrix. Um, on the right and left side, there are two buttons. There's a right button and a, a left button, A and B. Um, and then on the bottom, there are uh, three connectors, uh, numbered zero, one, and two. Those can be connected to additional uh, devices and LEDs and motors and things like that, and then a power and a ground connection um, on the right-hand side. And if you flip it over, kind of hidden in the background, there's an accelerometer and a compass that allows you to get orientation and attitude on this. Uh, there's a battery connector right here. Uh, you can connect a, what's called a lithium polymer battery, a USB connector that's connected to it right now for programming. Um, and then there's actually a Bluetooth antenna and a Bluetooth uh, module on there. So these are uh, capable for doing wireless. And uh, with an, uh, an iPad, you can actually program and code these through the Bluetooth app. Um, and so, um, and then finally on the very bottom, it's actually an edge connector. There's 20 pins on the bottom there that, that can be extended and added to other devices. So we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. So. Very cool. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Microsoft MakeCode environment. We're looking at a screenshot of the MakeCode environment. It is a website, and you go onto the website, you log in. If you'd like to join us, uh, the simplest way to get to that website right now is https colon double forward slash pxt.microbit.org. And again, if you just put in pxt.microbit.org, you should get up something that looks relatively like this. So this coding environment is really unique. Uh, it allows us to block-based code the micro bit, but it also on, if you look at your screen on the left hand side, you'll see like kind of a cartoon representation of the micro bit. And you can simulate all the code that you write right on the screen. So you actually don't even need hardware to work with this code. And as we drag these blocks from the central portion of the screen out uh, into the coding portion on the right hand side, we'll build programs by connecting those blocks like puzzle pieces. Yeah, it's really similar to a programming language like Scratch that uh, came out of the MIT Media Labs. Uh, it's all block based programming. There's an interesting environment here that you can also look at uh, the JavaScript as well as um, 
other ways of programming this using C or Python. Um, it's extensible to a lot of different different areas, but today we're going to look at just the block-based programming. So Brian, I want to take a minute, and I know that Megan's with us here uh, in the education studio at SparkFun, and uh, if we have any questions from the uh, from the uh, YouTube feed, please uh, let us know. Megan's uh, doing good work in the background here. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so moving on, um, we're gonna build the Hello World program and I'm gonna go out of the slides and I'm gonna go live to PXT. So again, the URL for that is pxt.makecode, a microbit.org. So, and you'll see that uh, up on the screen in front of you, Mike sharing that with us right now. If you need to, for some reason, your screen doesn't look like mine, you can go to settings and you can hit reset and you'll get this script that asks if you want to reset, I can hit reset and it'll come back and it'll populate my screen with two blocks, on start and a forever loop. On start is just like it sounds, it'll run that program once everything kicks up um, and forever is the standard forever loop. It executes everything within that forever block from top to bottom and then starts all over again when it reaches the top again. So I'm waiting for my screen to load. There, there it is. I'm gonna throw away the on start block. And you notice what Jeff did was just click and drag it over to the left hand side. It turns into a trash can. Uh, that's how you discard the blocks uh, if you have one too many or you wanna move them around. So. So I've centered my forever block in there, and I'm going to go to the first offering on the palette, the basic blocks. And from that basic block, when I click it, I get a whole selection of things I can use. The first one I'm going to use is the show string function. We're going to do the classic hello world program with this. I'm going to click it into the block. You can see how the block lights up as I drag it into position. And when I drop it in there, it clicks in, and I'm just going to alter my string of text ever so slightly to say, hello world. And now, when I go over, you can see that my simulation scrolls the text in the LEDs, hello world. That's pretty cool. So now, how do I get that program onto this thing? So in order to do this, all I have to do is click the download button. It compiles the code, it downloads the code into my downloads. When I go to my downloads and I grab this micro bit untitled sketch, I could have called this hello world, I should have called this hello world, but I'm just gonna click and drag it over to my micro bit. I'm gonna put it on there and you can see, Mike, if you cut to the micro bit, you can see that code flashing through the yellow light I get a copy script on it. And when I do that, you can see I now have hello world on the micro bit. So one thing that Jeff, uh, I don't know if we mentioned, was that when you plug this into your computer, it shows up like a hard drive, like a USB hard drive. Um, and so, so what he did was that that file, that, that compiled file, just needs to be dragged over into that, that drive, and in that process, it, it, what we call, flashes the code onto the micro bit. So, Megan, how are we doing? Do we have any comments we should address? Megan? Folks tuning in, I hope? What language, what language are we using? This actually builds the code in JavaScript in the background. Um, the blocks are actually graphical overlays of the JavaScript language. So actually, go back to that, if you want to go back to that, that make code uh, window there, there's two tabs there. Uh, there is a blocks tab and a JavaScript tab. And Mike's going to bring up my screenshot. And you can see right here, I'm on blocks, but if I click on JavaScript, what happens is that the make code website goes in it compiles the JavaScript and builds a web page based on that, and it will show me the JavaScript, uh, and there it is. Uh, we have a basic forever loop, and inside that basic forever loop, um, we're showing the string hello world. So if, you're a, if you program in JavaScript or Java or any of those other things, uh, this should look fairly familiar to you. And a nice, easy jump from a block-based programming environment to a text-based programming yep. environment. So I'm going to go back to blocks. And we could change this hello world to hello Jeff. 
or hello Derek. I think we actually may have lost Derek I here. I think we lost Derek in the feed here, but uh, he's with us in spirit. Yes. So I'm gonna drop this out. I'm gonna to go to a more graphical representation and we found that this is very popular with students. They get super excited when they start using the LEDs. Um, the text is interesting, but pictures kids love a lot. So I'm gonna to go to show icon. I'm gonna drag show icon out into my forever block. And now <clears throat> if I go over, you can see that I light up with the, with the heart icon <laughs> on my board. Well, I'm gonna build a small animation on this. So I'm gonna go back into the basic blocks. What kind of animation do you wanna create here? What's, the, what's your goal? Well, I wanna take two panels, much the same as an animation is a pane. Um, I'm gonna take two panes of different uh, pictures and LEDs, and I'm gonna build a picture with that. I'm actually gonna drag one out, but I'm gonna put a pause in between them so that they don't happen very fast. They, they happen slowly enough uh, that we can see what they're doing. I'm gonna click that in there. I'll duplicate if I right click or control, um, pad click for Macs, I'm a Mac user. Over that block, it gives me a duplicate of that block and I can plug that in down below. And now I'm gonna select on my second image a slightly different image. I'm gonna come up a little bit so I can see it on the screen. I'm still not up far enough to get it on my screen. It's kind of tricky with these. Uh, with well, the, the resolutions. With kind the of resolution great. from the. Yeah. You'll get to that. Yeah, let me move the block a little bit here and see if I can get it to go down. Still having a little bit of a hard time. So I'm gonna grab the fabulous block and drop it in there. And now when I go over and I run, you can see kind of like a beating heart. <laughs> it's like an exploding heart. Like an exploding heart because our hearts explode for teachers. <laughs> I like it, I like it. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna iterate on this a little bit. Um, I can go into that forever block and I can change the delay for this. I'm at 100 milliseconds right now. If I go to 300 milliseconds on both of these blocks, this is editable, and I hit refresh on this, now I get a slightly slower flash on Ooh. that. We've got stuff falling here in the studio. So we're bringing, we're, we're, we're collapsing the roof on this. Um, the other thing I can do is I can go into the loops, and I can pull out the repeat block so this says repeat four times. I'll plug that code into the repeat block, plug the repeat into forever. Actually, I'm not gonna do forever because it'll keep going over and over again. What I'm gonna do is pull that out and I'm gonna say on start. I'm gonna have this repeat its action four times and then go to a blank screen. And in order to get the blank screen, I'm gonna pull out the show LEDs panel and leave it blank. If I clicked on those LEDs, they would change color. And I'll show that. I can click on that, select whatever LED I want to be on when that panel works. But now if I hit refresh on my one, two, three, four, and then it shuts off. So I kind of have a sequence, it drops into that loop, it repeats that code four times, and then shuts off. So we have kind of a lineal progression. There's a bunch of different options here in terms of computational thinking, sequencing, logic. Um, one of my favorite ones is, is getting the students to recreate an actual heartbeat. So how would I do a bump, 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 right? And actually converting that sequence and Converting what you hear into something that is programmatic is a great example of, of a, an extension project that you could have your students explore with this. Very cool. So I'm gonna let Brian play for a little while and sure. you've got some examples that you wanna show off? Yeah, I think uh, the next one we'll show off here is, oh, I don't know what just happened here. <laughs> this is live television, folks. Yeah, oh. All right, hold on, sorry. 
So Megan, while we're waiting, are there any questions from the internet? Any? Oh, great. Very good. Um, Google just kicked me out. So while Brian's doing that, um, I'm going to go in. <clears throat> Instead of repeat four times, I'm going to pull these blocks out and just do a little playing while Brian's getting signed back on. I'm going to throw all this away. I left my icon blocks in there, but I'm going to go to input. And I'm going to say <clears throat> on shake. And I'm going to drop these blocks into on shake. And you can see when I do that, in the simulation, a small button for shake shows up, and I hit that button, and I get one, two, three, and it only does it when I'm shaking. So how does it how does it detect the shake? What actually on that device is detecting the shake? So on the back side of the micro bit is an accelerometer which senses motion. So when the micro bit is moved above a certain uh, acceleration, it triggers that program. That's cool. And we can simulate it using just the mouse shaking them, moving the mouse back and forth. That's right. We can change that. We can say, uh, I can take that out and I can throw away a shake and I can go back to input. And I think actually this is a cue for you yeah. for uh, for some gaming. Yeah, of course. So there's a couple things here that we're going to talk about here. A lot of the stuff that we're doing here is what we call event-driven coding, right? So so when this happens, I want this to, to happen, right? So when, so what Jeff was showing, when the shake occurs, that event occurs, we want this thing to be displayed. And so um, one of the things, the very first things that, that a student will immediately see on here are that there are two buttons. There's a A and a B. And so uh, let's look, look at using those as events and triggers for uh, programming our device here. So, um, Mike, can you switch over to 9? All right, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a real simple rock, paper, scissors game. And rock, paper, scissors has exactly three uh, uh, game pieces. And it turns out with two buttons, two buttons, you actually have three of three different options. You have A. You have B and then both A and B. Um, in binary, you might look at that as 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Um, and so let's look at in the blocks. Uh, under input, there is a on button press. So on button A press. And I'm just going to click and drag that out. I'm going to then create. When the A button is pressed, I'm going to create a, I guess, a rock, right? So rock, paper, scissors. And I'm going to use that show LEDs icon that Jeff was talking about. And a rock, a rock is just, uh, I don't know, I think it's got a bunch of, oops, it's a bunch of the LEDs, maybe a, a block of LEDs in the middle here that's all going to be turned on. So I'm just going to click on each one of these, click, 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 click. And so now this is set up. I can test it on the simulation here. So when I click A, I get a rock. So the next one I want probably be paper. So what I can do here is I can uh, right click on this. And as Jeff showed before, there's an option to duplicate, to duplicate the block. And now I can drag this over here. Well, I can't have two things that do both do when A is pressed. But if I click on this down, drop down here from A, I can say when B is pressed, so rock, paper, well, let's look at what a paper is. Paper is probably more of just a large rectangle. So let's just open this one up and we'll convert this one to a rectangle. Uh, let's see. So click, 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 click. Let's see. Oh. That one there, that one there, there. Oops, there. A couple more. All right, I'll clean that one up. So now when I click the B, we get paper, we get rock, paper. Now, here's where it's funny. So let's, there's one more option here. So if I right click on here one more time, I'm gonna drag one more down here and let's scroll this down. 
close that little notification there. And so one of the last option here is when both A and B are pressed. And so when both A and B are pressed, I'm going to create a scissors. Now this is where it's a little tricky. So with just 25 LEDs, a five by five matrix, we have to be a little clever and creative with how we create our icons. And this is a, a good exercise in artistic rendering and uh, interpretation. Symbolic logic. Symbolic logic. Uh, so scissors have uh, two handles, I like that. So we're gonna create the two handles there. And then I'm gonna try to create the blades. And so we're gonna go something like that. And then another blade down here. That look, kind of looks like a scissor, right? And then if you look, right. And then if you look at the micro bit simulation now, it actually, because I can't actually click both buttons simultaneously at the same time with my mouse, uh, that'd be a trick. There's A over here on the left, B here on the right, and then they actually give you a fake button here that simulates as if you were to click both of them at the same time. And so when I click both of them, I have rock, paper, scissors. And so we have rock, paper, scissors, we can now take this and I can upload this to my device. And so I'm gonna do the same thing that Jeff showed here earlier. I'm gonna plug it in to my computer. And something that I'm not sure if you noticed that uh, Jeff was doing this on a Mac, I'm running this on a PC. Um, and in fact, we also have a Chromebook here. So uh, Microbit is programmable on all three of those platforms. Um, and Brian yesterday had it up and running on an earlier iPad as well. Yep. So uh, this, yep. this platform is almost, uh, what we refer to as agnostic. Yeah, absolutely. So I just plugged it in and you'll notice that it showed up as a D drive, just like a USB thumb drive might show up. And I'm gonna just move this over to the side here. Oops, and then I am going to, oh, it does not like that. Let's see, so there's a download button right here. We're gonna click download. It creates what's called a hex file right here, done. Right here is the hex file, and this is where it's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to try to, oh, I can't do that either, can I? I'm just going to try to grab another mouse. All right, so I'm going to try to do this with a trackpad here. So I'll drag this over, Click in the and then, ooh. Did it do it? And it's uploading. Blinky, 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 blinky. And then now give it a test. And now Jeff. if I turn it around and I'm gonna let Mike kind of zoom on this. So if I try button B, I get paper. paper. If I try button A, I get rock. And if I try A and B, I get scissors. So, so if you program this and your friend programs one, you can do it. And, and what's neat about holding your thumb on both buttons is you actually can't tell what they're going to. So if I went rock, paper, paper scissors, and there's, there so, it is. So right. if there's two of you out there sitting next to each other on your computer, you could also kind of do the click, click, click on the computer. Right. It's actually kind of funny, right? Like we, we've gotten rid other. of what you could do with your hands. And yeah, it, yeah. It's the digital like, world. It's kind of like this thing. We are. Right here, that just keep, right, yeah, right. yeah. We so are infinite uh, recursion. We are. We are digital natives, right? Or we're trying to encourage the next generation of digital natives. Awesome, Megan. How are we doing for questions? Is there anything we need to address? How do you make a pedometer? I believe there's actually a tutorial. On um, the yeah. Make Code website for building a pedometer. So yeah, I think I think uh, that'd be a fun one to look at on Shake. What I might do is is create a counter, right? So, Jeff, do you want to? Do you want to go ahead, Brian? We can. Let's let's. So let's, we're gonna co we're we're coding live without a net here. <laughs> Somebody said, "How do you make a pedometer?" So we'll pick that up and use it as a prompt. All right. For so, uh, our next. Uh, all right. So Mike, are you on my? Are you on? All right. Great. So I'm gonna reset this. Um, oh, actually, before I reset this, I want to sh well show you guys a couple things here. So um, the code that I just created, I can click on the share here, and it will ask me to um, publish my project. And I can publish this, and this is great for schools. Um, it appears to be entirely COPA compliant. There's zero uh, identity information here that's associated with this. Um, it's totally anonymous, and so this code, this 
kind of gobbledygook here uh, is the code for my program. Um, it's on the server. I can then email this to Jeff. I could email it to my teacher. I could email it to my friends. And they now have my rock, paper, scissors game. But the coolest thing that Brian came in last, Brian came in this morning, we were talking about um, about make code and microbit this morning. And Brian said, did you know that you can open a file that exists and it'll repopulate the blocks? And if you're familiar with uh, with ArduBlock or some of the other code-based programming environments for micro microcontrollers, uh, that's not possible, but it is here. And um, it, I thought that was really neat. So you just open PXT and then uh, point PXT from the open file uh, command. Yeah. So here I'll show you. It's on so. it's on the screen right now. So what I did was I went to projects, import file, and from here I can actually import the hex file, and that is that has the original code in it. So that's a it's kind of a neat little trick there. There's a lot of little hidden secrets that are that are really surprising and uh, pretty amazing. The depth of microbit is really impressive. So. We uh, we started teaching workshops. Uh, right around uh, the first of the year with Microbit, and uh, it's been extraordinary. Just at workshops, when I show the code simulator, educators all over the country have been going, wow, when can I get my hands on these? It's really cool, and my kids will love this. And so we're, that's one of the reasons we chose to do this today, was to get you guys a jump start um, on the Microbit. So, all right, so I'm gonna, we're gonna play around here, and I'm gonna explore here with you all. Um, so I'm gonna create this on shake trigger event here. And then I'm gonna look at what's called a variable. I'm gonna create a variable. And uh, we're gonna create a variable that is uh, our count, right? Or, or step, should we call it step? We'll call it steps, uh, to be plural here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is every time on shake, I'm gonna say change, ooh, the steps variable by one. And um, inside these blocks, this is uh, very similar to how Scratch is done. I could say change by uh, plus one. I could do minus one, so I could decrement it. I could increment by fives, tens, whatever um, I like. But you know what we're gonna do is we're just going to uh, report the steps there. And then what I wanna do is I need to report that number back to the screen. And what one of the really neat things that we discovered was that under the basics, there is a show number block here. So there's a show number. And so I'm gonna put this in here. And one of the things that we're talking about here, you'll notice that there are actually two different blocks. There's a show number, and then there's a show string. And, and for those of you that teach computer science, uh, this is one of those basic concepts on what we would call data types. Right, there are, there's a string data type, and then there's a number data type. And they are, they're similar, they're both types of data, but they are not the same. And so um, distinguishing between those two is important. So, and what I can do now is um, instead of showing just the number zero, I want to show the value of this steps. And I'm just gonna drag it into there. You'll see that it highlights, I let it go. And so now, if this works, um, every time I shake it, uh, I don't know how, how there's one. How much? If you touch shake, if you click on shake on the shake button, it gives it a good shake. So there you go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> but you can also move the mouse cursor back and forth. I think this would be a fun one. Let's, uh, should I, can I? So I, did, our, did our questionnaire, question or, questioner, get, get that, I hope? I kind of want to upload this and see if this works. So Brian's going to upload this to the board. And then hopefully we'll be able to show you this. All right. Is da, that da, 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 da. Blinky, it's amazing blinky, blinky, how fast blinky, blinky. Blinky. One of the things I want to point out is that there are no drivers required. So any of you folks who've programmed with Arduino or any of the other devices, um, there are no drivers. This is just plugs right in. It looks just like a native uh, USB flash drive. So so Mike's getting ready to zoom. And we have zero. As soon as we get a good one, I'll give it a shake. There's one. I'll give it another shake. There's two. What happens when you go past nine? What's? Give it a good shake, Jeff. Come on. There we go. Ooh, oh, it 10, scrolls. it scrolls. There's 11. 
We could do this all day. We could do this all day. We like this. This is fun. <laughs> awesome. Really good. Um, there's a couple other examples that they show on how to create uh, a dice. This is right there. There's a, a random command within uh, Microbit um, in the PXT. We keep calling it PXT. Um, and just wanted to clarify, Microsoft, when they originally launched this, they called it PXT. It's now being it's really called make code. And we want to be clear that that um, make code is the proper appellation <laughs> for uh, correct for the Microbit programming environment. So. so uh, but yeah, there's the that's that there's, was great. That yeah. was awesome, Megan. Do we have anything else for the World Wide Web? Have we touched on how it can be programmed over uh, Bluetooth? We can, we can do that quickly here. <coughs> uh, so Ryan's got his trusty iPad out. So I'm going to see. If, so there's a Microbit app for uh, for the for the iPad. Turns out that it has to be one of the more recent. Um, iOS devices, the ones that have Bluetooth, Bluetooth. So I think 4.0. So yeah. uh, there used to be, oh, here, it is right here. So, oh, that's plugged in. <laughs> Don't uh, tear the, so, it's a part. So back when I was a teacher, that was uh, five years ago, I bought this iPad. Um, and uh, this is not, this is not compatible with uh, the new, the new programming environment. This is, I think, uh, Apple's trying to get me to buy new hardware. But the newer version here, um, with uh, Bluetooth 4.0, will allow has this app here, and I click on this connection button, and it says uh, pair, pair new micro bit, and so yeah. So what we'll do is we'll pair new micro bit, and it gives you some instructions here. Hold a, a Jeff, can you do this with me? Sure. So we're gonna hold A and B at the same time. So I'm holding A and B down, the A and B button. You're gonna continue holding those, and then you're gonna reach in the back and. Tap and release the re the reset button. So, so there's hold, a button on the back. Hold and I and then release tap it. and release and then now release A and B, and it should say pairing mode. It says pairing. And then it's going to show a funny diagram here. Actually, I don't know. If, can you guys see that? All right. So there. There it so is. Now, and so on so the screen, now, can we so can we show both of these? Yep. All right. So I'm gonna just tap. Ooh, that. Yep. That. 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 Is that right? Did I get Looks that right? Good. Next. Next. And they're talking to each other. It's checking that value. What's it say? Uh, currently searching. This actually, I think, was the same one that I paired yesterday. So um, let's try that. So I think we're okay. So, I, uh, but this allows us. This is the interface that will allow us to use the same the same PXT code, uh, or sorry, the Make Code environment out of a web browser right on the iP iPad, and then I can click on this flash, and let's see if it's going. To so do we'll it. see. Does it takes a little while for it. That that's good. When the little head shakes, shakes. up here, that's I don't that's think a good it's sign. actually doing it. So actually, can you can you get you back into to that reset? Yeah, that pairing mode. Okay, so that and then here we go. No, nope. So make sure you release the reset first, and then the two A and B. No. So it's a little it's a little tricky, but all right now there we there go. There we pairing go. Mode. All right, so now I'm going to try it one more time. Searching. Gives the same pattern. Yeah, it should be. Well, of course, on demo day. Never works on demo day. That's our famous. Um, but uh, for the person who asked that, if you have an iPad um, out there, I would encourage you to give this a shot, give it a try. Um, and uh, I think there's just some, right, some understanding how to get the, the hooks to work here. Um, so, uh, cool. So I want to try some stuff with some data logging. Um, we and some got like maybe 15 minutes total. Yep. I think I can yep. do it, Brian. All right. All right, let's do it. So, um, Mike, can you pull up my screen? Yep. There we go. So I'm going to throw this off and I'm going to go into basic. And I'm going to grab a forever block. 
Megan, if there's a pressing need from the internet, please let me know. Thank you. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to input and I'm gonna grab light level and I'm gonna pull it out here. And then in basic, I'm gonna say show number and the same way that Brian showed that variable, I'm actually gonna show the light level and Brian, can you explain how we get the light level? Oh, this is actually pretty neat. Um, the way it's getting light level is actually from the LEDs. Um, in fact, one of our creative techs wrote a, a tutorial talking about how you can actually use an LED to measure light levels. Um, and you can see that on our, our website. Um, is it on our I think tutorials? It's on, yeah, it might be on learn.sparkfun.com. Right. Uh, but these LEDs are actually doubling as light sensors, uh, which is actually a pretty neat thing. So they're crystals. Um, an LED is basically a crystalline structure, and when light uh, act, hits that crystalline structure, it causes it to uh, alter a little bit and allow more or less electricity to flow through the circuit. Yeah. yeah. So um, you can see on my code, Mike, if you go to my screenshot, you can see on my code, I've got a very simple set of blocks here. I've got the forever loop, um, show number, and I plug light level in there. And then in the simulation, you can see that I'm at 128. And as I scroll down or up, I get more or less light. And I'm at zero. And now my simulation shows zero. And if I go back up, I can go all the way to 255, that famous range of binary numbers, zero to 255 or eight bits. So yeah. um, we load this code to the micro bit and get basically the same stuff. Do um, you wanna try it? I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna take that code. I'll hit download. I'm gonna get my flashlight here ready for you. It is pretty bright in the studio. So I have a hex file now. I'm going to open up my finder, grab that hex file, drop it on the micro bit, and then I get the blinky, 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 which is the code loading to it. And Mike's got to run back over to the camera to switch camera because we don't have a camera person today. So now you can see it's pretty bright in here. And if you look, my light level is about 170 right now. Now, if I if Brian shines his flashlight over there, it's going way up. I don't know. Can we? 222. Tilt, tilt, tilt that way. Tilt that way, Brian says. And I, uh, so the funny part about this is is that if I cover this, you actually can't you see can't it. see the numbers. And now, but actually, trust us. But trust us. It's now. 16. I really it is. Look. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. Brian. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to look. Brian. 103. 103. 103. Try it again. Try it again cuz it's 32. 44. 42. Yep. Yeah. Bouncing a little yeah. bit. So, um So we have a data logger. We have the ability to immediately show um, right, measure temperature, or sorry, not temperature, but uh, light levels, um, and report it right onto there. I'm going to build an if statement into this. Okay. I'm going to do um, a Great. logical comparator. So I'm going to go to the logic blocks. I'm going to grab if then else, and I'm going to pull out this show number plug it into if then and I'm going to grab a math operator and I'm going to grab oh is it in logic yeah it's I'm going to grab from the logic blocks pardon me a comparator oh where's my pxt code go did I just crash the website I believe I just crashed the website did I? Oh, go forward. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Good sharp someone, eyes. Someone, someone's watching out for us. Someone's, here. yeah. Mike's awesome. So the nice thing, this is actually demonstrating one of the cool things about um, 
ab about make code is that if something like this happens, actually your code is stashed in a cookie uh, in your computer and it should repopulate. There is the code that, that I left behind. Is that like a chocolate chip cookie? Uh, what's a cookie? What's a cookie? What's a cookie? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but again, that, you know, that kind of web behavior that we've all become accustomed to where websites, uh, remember us, uh, is baked into this. How'd I, how'd I do? <laughs> oh, that, how'd was I do? that was good, right? That was good. <laughs> oh, you funny man. Yeah. So I'm going to plug if light level into this, I'm going to say if it's less than half the range, which is 128. And then I'm going to tell it to do something else if it's greater than that. And I'm actually going to give it just uh, a picture. And I think I'm going to go to the icons. The default one appears to be a heart. And I'm going to give ghost. it a ghost. Yeah. I'm going to give it a ghost. So now when I go over here at 128, it's a ghost. When I go down, it starts scrolling the value 72. There it I is. I go back up. So what, what Jeff's doing to interact with the, uh, with the simulation is that there's a little, little light level thing on the upper left corner there, and you can click and drag that and move it up and down to simulate the amount of light that it's seeing. I'm a ghost. I'm not a ghost. I'm <laughs> a ghost. Very cool. And so we've gotten through an if statement as well. Uh, so I want to check back in with Megan and make sure that uh, we don't have any questions we need to answer. Okay, so great. Uh, Derek is doing good duty on the good. questions on the back end of this. Uh, a couple of things coming up. There's a tremendous amount of resources evolving for the micro bit right now. Um, they are on pre-order on our website. If you really want the hardware, you can go get it there. Um, we'll be doing a lot of work with the Microbit at the ISTE conference. If you're an ISTE attendee, come find us. Yeah. We'd um, love to show you what we do and see what you do as well. And Mike, can you just quick uh, switch over to my screen here? You got that there? So uh, a couple things that we want to just show you here. Um, <laughs> this was... We did have uh, one that we were going to do called honk. We uh, I forgot honk. There's a we can make sounds and, and other fun things. Uh, what kid does not like to make fun sounds? Um, you'd have to connect an external speaker to the actual device, um, but the simulation in Microbit allows you to do that. Um, one of our creative texts, one of our creative texts, uh, Sean Heimel created a, a bunch of videos here of getting started. So if you're interested in checking out some of these other videos, there are I think three videos in total, sparkmaneducation.com. Under the video resources, um, we have a micro bit link there for all of the videos he's created so far. Um, so check those out, they're, uh, they're really good. And you'll see a lot of duplication with the stuff that we've shown you here today, at least with that getting started part. But the next one he does is a, a Magic 8 Ball, and then uh, I can't remember the next one after that, but there's some fun projects here uh, that he walks through. And then the other thing I wanna talk about is that within the microbit environment, there are actually these uh, built-in tutorials and examples. And so you can click on the Getting Started in the upper right-hand corner, and it actually runs you through this uh, tutorial here that talks about uh, kind of what we did, which was, uh, can I get it to show a string on start. And then if I clicked on the hint, it would actually help me out and show me how to do that. But this is very much in that like code.org, hour of code uh, mentality of just, you give them a little teaser and then uh, challenge them to find the blocks of what they need to code it. Um, and so this is an example of the hint. The hint actually shows you all of the things of what you would say, right? So this is the hello. And this one, instead of saying hello, it says micro, right? So. Uh, that's kind of neat. And then uh, the other area is if you click on the projects tab up here, we showed you this a little bit here, but there's actually a bunch of, oh, actually, I don't know if I have it here. Uh, let me go back to this because. Mike, if you go to my screen. Oh, I, I've got it here. Go live. Oh. Okay, if I'm live. So if I go to projects and I click on projects, uh, there we go. Click uh, make on the make. There are all kinds of other tutorials and things here that you can dig around and play around. The flashing heart is very similar to what Jeff did. 
earlier, uh, the love o meter, uh, smiling buttons, scroll down a little bit, rock, paper, scissors. This is a different variation of what we did, but uh, another one, a magic button trick, banana keyboard, um, a bunch of fun projects here, and I think uh, the, the Make Code folks and uh, the Microbit Foundation will be continuing to add more and more resources here as time goes on. So if you're on the West Coast and you know Derek, Derek's uh, in, in Oregon, uh, Derek has an incredibly fun rock, paper, scissors example that runs on the radio on board uh, Microbit. So one Microbit can talk to another uh, through a radio connection, so, so there's that stuff. If you find Derek, look him up on that. And then, uh, Mike, can you flip back to my screen here? Um, and so we showed you this sharing, the, the ability to share your projects and uh, sharing that, that URL. Um, and again, I, I haven't given Microbit or MakeCode or Microsoft any of my personal information, so it uh, appears to be entirely COPA compliant. So this is a, a great application for classrooms. Um, and then uh, we're, we're we're building a bunch of stuff for Microbit. We'd so. like to share that with you. Uh, uh, if you're interested, we'd like to do more of these webinars. Um, a couple of closing things. We're really curious about what you think about the Microbit, having seen it and worked with us today. Um, what age groups do you think Microbit would be good for? Um, and maybe something like, what are the hurdles for classroom implementation? And so. if you're uh, if you're going to be at ISTE this year in San Antonio, come see us. Uh, we'll have a booth there. And Booth 1909. Oh, I was like, what does 1909 mean? <laughs> Booth 1909. Um, come and visit us. We have also uh, four workshops that we're presenting, uh, not around the micro bit, the workshops. Uh, the, mic the workshops will be around mostly Arduino and a few other things, but uh, micro bit. Actually, we will be showcasing the micro bit at a meetup there oh. with Maker Ed. Oh, is that, so, that's official. That is official. Oh, it's now, it's, it's, it's internet. It's, then so if you're attending the Maker Ed meetup, we'll be there um, playing with the micro bit. And uh, uh, those Maker Ed meetups are always really, really fun. Uh, please feel free to join us. Yeah. What we, I don't think we missed anything. I think that's good. All right. So, um, yeah. So post some comments to the YouTube link or uh, tweet at us. We're at Sparkfun.edu. And uh, we hope to do this again soon. Great. So this is fun. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Jeff. Awesome. Rock on. Rock on. Was that, was that on?